So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology. Welcome to the iPad 10th generation unboxing. Now this one does start at 449. It actually officially launched today. I did get the blue colorway and I just want to let you know that you can get an iPad Air with M1 for a little bit more, but it's actually 150 more. So this is going to bring the all screen iPad to the entry level or to more people's hands, essentially. I also picked up the Magic Keyboard Folio, which kind of goes with this. It's not quite as good as the one on the Pros because it does have this, you know, bending thing, but this might be more useful for those of you who don't always want to use the keyboard itself. So it's also a nice touch. It looks like it's only offered in white at the current moment, and this iPad right here, you can get it for a little bit more with 256 gig. Now you can see right here, we do have iPad 10th generation Wi-Fi edition, USB-C cable, USB-C power adapter, and that's about it. So just a couple pull tabs here, and we'll go ahead and be in the iPad itself. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we're working with. So you can see right here, here is the iPad. And I expect this to be quite light, similar to that of an iPad Air. It's actually slightly heavier, surprisingly, but only by a hair, so most people are not gonna notice. And Right away, I can tell you, I do like some of the color options. I'm not a big fan of the new pink. It doesn't look very pink. It looks more magenta or more of that hot pink. It's not that, you know, that rose gold kind of pink. But you can see right here, here is the blue colorway. And we do have a 12 megapixel camera up there. This will come with the Apple A14 Bionic chipset. And here where you will connect your magic keyboard. On the right, you will find yourself the volume rockers and speakers at the top, power button with a fingerprint scanner touch ID, pretty nice, USB-C at the bottom, and more speakers. So let's go ahead and get that turned on. And let's take a look at what else comes in the box really quickly here. So I got that upside down. We'll put that like that. And you can see right here, we do have this little pamphlet right here. Let's see what comes in here. iPad and Right there, welcome to iPad. Simple, just what you're kind of used to with unboxing Apple products. And their iPad boxes are not as slim as their iPhone boxes. Maybe they'll work on that in the future. You could see a couple Apple stickers, always nice to get some of those. And you could see nothing else in there. So what's nice is that with this new iPad, you are getting a braided cable. They're starting to do this with a lot of you know, products, but it's kind of nice that they're giving you this at the more entry-level iPad. It's not like they're reserving that for the the most premium iPads like they do for the Apple Watch Ultra. So you can see right there, USB brick, fast charger. Should do pretty well overall. Again, Apple products don't charge the fastest out there in the world, but I've unboxed the iPad Air. Well, I, I'm not sure if I did it on the channel, but I have checked out the iPad Air M1. And I can tell you this iPad feels pretty similar already. It's similar size similar weight. It's just going to be a difference in the specifications under the hood. So we're now in the iPad 10.9, the 10th generation iPad with Apple A14 Bionic. And I can tell you right away with the build and the, the bezels, the bezels look a little bit thicker. I, I'm not sure if it's an illusion or what, but they look a little thicker than what I've seen on like my older 11 inch iPad Pro, for example. But they're still sans all screen and it's much better than I would say the older bezel home button. I will say some people ask about, is it hollow? It's still got that little bit of a hollow feel. I do like that they move touch ID up here and I could tell you setup was super easy, super fast with touch ID. Now I will also tell you that this is only a 60 Hertz panel, but so is the iPad air. So is pretty much every iPhone except for the pros. So, the 120 hertz promotion is reserved for pro products. So if you are looking for, you know, the pro experience, you got to go for the pro. But I honestly don't care because with an iPad, I, I just like to kick back and read, kick back and watch some video, something like that. And I just love this option being $150 less than the iPad Air, but offering you a more premium looking iPad. I think this is going to be great for a lot of people who just don't want to pay those top level prices but they want an iPad that looks modern. This is a great option for you guys now. And for all those people saying this is a terrible product, you can just get the iPad Air. And a lot of people are, are just really going hard on in the media. They're not looking at the people who have maybe a ninth generation iPad and they want to get the all screen, but 
They don't got the funds to go seven, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars. And they might not even be able to buy the Magic Keyboard Folio at this moment, but they can definitely get their hands on the iPad, you know, with <laughs> 449. So this is going to be a great option to kick around the house iPad. And it doesn't give you stage manager because you need M1 for that. Really don't care for this size of an iPad because it would be a little bit cramped anyway. So this is a pretty decent option, I would say, overall. I think you're going to be quite happy. And on my first impressions, I definitely think it's worth it. You are paying a price premium over last year, but you're getting a lot more here. Now, there is a 12 megapixel camera on the back of this thing as well. We'll take a look at that really quickly and take a photo. And it looks pretty sharp. That's pretty good. It looks better than those older cameras from iPads back in the day. And you're going to get the options to record up to 4K at 60, which is not bad whatsoever for an iPad at this price point. So while this is not no pro iPad camera and most people don't even use the camera all that much, I think it's going to be good enough for a lot of people here. Also on that front facing camera, they moved it over here into the landscape mode, which is excellent because that's how you want to use it when you are using, you know, doing a video car or something like that. And that's also a 12 megapixel. So if I go like that, you can see it has that ultra wide angle as well. Pretty amazing stuff right here. I think for this price point, this is just stuff they used to just put in the more premium stuff. So they're bringing it down. And now you have weather as well with iPad OS 16, which is pretty cool. We can see the weather and stuff like that. So I gotta say, man, I think Apple has a real winner here in terms of value. I wish it was more like 399, but at the same time, I think a lot of people are going to get their hands on this one and be quite happy. And now I'll be keeping my eye on the battery life as well. But one thing I think is kind of lame is this does have only 64 gigs of storage to start. I just think that's too little. We're throwing games on here and look at this 14.1 gigs used. I mean, people are going to fill this up in no time. So unless you're just going to be doing what I'm doing, which is just reading and watching some videos on here, that's what I'm going to do with this iPad then I think you're going to need a lot more storage and have to go to the 256 gig if you're trying to make this your main, you know, iOS product next to your iPhone. But if you think about this, you can get an iPhone SE, for example, or one next year, the new one that's going to be coming out and have this and you have a pretty solid Apple ecosystem under a thousand dollars. So it's a solid option here. Battery life should be around 10 hours. And uh, I just want to wrap it up here by just saying that a lot of people think that this iPad is just really, you know, not worth it due to the in price increase. But when you take a look at the price increase, look what they're upgrading from. I mean, you are seeing substantial upgrades, I think, that justify the $150 price tag. This is just a much better looking iPad than last year. And some people will still like the classic home button iPad, which is still available. But I mean, for a little bit more, look what you can get. And people do say, well, you know, this is so confusing. Actually, it's not very confusing. It's very simple. If you want the cheapest iPad, get the this iPad right here. If you want a little bit more from that, get this iPad. If you want an M1 without buying a Pro, get the iPad Air. If you want the smallest iPad, get an iPad Mini. If you want the biggest iPad, get an iPad Pro 12.9. And if you want a non-big iPad Pro, get the 11. It's pretty simple. They're just a product for everybody. It's a lot of choice. But you just got to know what you want, and then they got an iPad for you. So we'll take a look at this Magic Keyboard Folio. You can see you can use it without the keyboard. That's something I quite like. On the Pro Magic Keyboard, you have to have it attached. This product, though, I think is quite pricey, and a lot of people are going to forego it. I'm a little bit annoyed that they only have the white colorway of this Magic Keyboard. But I will say that if they had a black one or a darker color one, I probably would have went with that. Um, this definitely does get dirty over time if you're not careful. I definitely got my white one for the iPad Pro quite dirty. A felt lining, though, you can see it's very soft. So at least they're offering you high quality for that high quality price point you are paying. Also over here, you'll see the keyboard is full size and tactile. It's going to feel just like something you'll find on a MacBook. So one of the reasons why that price is higher is because it really does transform the productivity of that keyboard. So that's pretty good. And then there's going to be more pamphlets in here that tells you how to go ahead and use it. It's not that difficult, though. All right. So here's your iPad. We're going to go ahead and place it on the iPad Magic Keyboard Folio like that. There you go. You can use it in that angle. A little bit of the blue will peek out. Let's go ahead and move this off. 
And then if you just want to use it, it's going to have multiple angles you can go ahead and use it on. Now you can also go ahead and just snap it into place like that. And you'll see you have a nice little keyboard that attaches to your iPad there. So you're going to get a lot more of a surface like experience here now with the newer iPad, but giving you a nice keyboard and iPad OS is getting more product productive these days and getting more powerful. So this is right time to bring a product like this to the iPad. And that's going to wrap it up here for me with the iPad 10th generation unboxing and first impressions. I will give you a full review soon if you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this one right here, definitely not giving you the fastest chip. It's an A14 that came out with the iPhone 12 series. But it does have, I mean, it's an iPad. iPads last and last and last. And even with that, I'm not concerned. I'm pretty sure this can still go four or five years easily going into the futures as I've had iPads the last five, six years easily. So I'm not concerned whatsoever. If you want a little more power, just get the iPad Air. But if you want to save the most and get the best deal for the most modern iPad, the cheapest, and getting the most modern look, this is the iPad for you. If you guys found this video helpful, entertaining, informing, do me a favor, click the like button for me. Let me know which colorway you like with the new iPad and drop your comments down below what you want to see next on this product. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.